how the screen changes your personality. You might not know, but every time you go back to your phone, your computer, every time you get in front of that screen and you're scrolling for dopamine, you're changing your personality. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. Stay with me in this video so that I can share with you what your personality is, how it's impacted by screen use, and what you can do to leave the screen behind or moderate it in a healthy way at least for the rest of your life. Let's dig in. Number one, what is your personality? So we think of our personalities as concrete mechanisms, but really they're fluid. They can change. I don't know if you saw a while back where Jim Carrey was talking about Actually, you know, some people perceived he had a mental breakdown. Other people perceived that he was woke uh, from woke culture. I actually perceived he had both. Uh, so let me share with you about that, that he was so many different characters in so many different movies that he could meld himself into that person pretty easily. And he could be that person for a while. And then he could come back to being Jim Carrey. And then he could be the next person he had to be. And then he realized like, he can just change his personality. Most people so concretely relate to their personality that they don't see it as changeable or malleable. It's because we anchor into it and we identify with it so much, but it's actually changeable. And it's changeable when you change your brain. That's why when we use neuroplasticity, we can change our personalities. Now here's what personality is, number one. It is how you perceive yourself. So if you perceive yourself with high self-worth, you walk around with your head held high and feeling confident and calm and focused and you interact with the world. If you perceive yourself with high self-worth, generally speaking, your brain is in this medium calm focus zone of peace and joy. You know who you are, the true authentic self, and you can be that version. You don't need external validation. You're internally validated. Now, what happens is when we find the screen, and especially if it's explicit material or if you're scrolling social media and you're looking at all these other people's lives, and of course, it's just the screenshots that they want you to see of their lives because, you know, we know that everybody's life has just about as much junk as ours. Everybody's pretending their junk is fine and inexistent, especially when they're posting their selfies. I want you to know people have junk, we all have it. But when you're scrolling through, especially the faster you scroll through and you're passively consuming content in the screen, it is increasing the fast speed in your brain and the slow speed in your brain. And this is how it works. As you see people, and especially the faster, faster you scroll, the faster your brain will end up going and it increases high beta, that anxiety mode. Then your brain becomes wired. And if you do that for any amount of time, you are jacking your brain up with high beta, anxiety mode, overwhelm, hypervigilant. It gives you OCD. It gives you constant thoughts and rumination. That is cranking. Then your wired brain becomes tired and you start using more of the slow speed. So now you're not only looking for more calming, you're also looking for more stimulation. That's what screen time does to you. And then it creates changes in your personality the younger that you find it. And it makes it so that you constantly need to self-soothe this low self-esteem personality that's brewing under the surface and is being reinforced by this fast and slow speed of the screen. And this is how it works developmentally. When you're young, there is more slow speed. And when you're young and there's stressors and you're learning how to deal with it, if you just go into the screen to deal with it, you're just reinforcing that pattern instead of going into the world and approaching and engaging and finding solution. So you've trained your brain to go into the screen to feel good, to offset the pain of the world. And we know from the science what it does is it creates more pain in the world. You're scrolling for dopamine in the screen and it creates a dopamine deficit in the real life, which pushes you back into the screen, which is pulling you in with all the dopamine. It's a very slippery slope and it needs to be moderated. And I'm gonna tell you that in just a second. But 
what you're consuming matters too. If you're just looking at people and if you're just consuming them as objects and if you are thinking of them with more esteem than yourself, it is reinforcing that low self-esteem personality. So now you misperceive yourself with lower self-esteem and other people with higher self-esteem, which means you need their validation, which is external, and you're not able to give yourself that internal validation that you would be able to if you could stay out of the screen. It is a loop. You are all loopified for sure if you're stuck in that. So what I want you to know is that it's not just emotional, the way that you're feeling. It's neurological, it's coming from your brain pattern. Now, number three, what's the solution? The solution is to moderate the screen. And if you're really sucked in, a washout period, a screen washout period is probably in order. But this is what I would suggest that you do. Number one, clean up your feeds. Only have things that motivate you in your feed. Think of it as a mind diet. So if you're trying to get your body healthy and if you're trying to become strong and you want to rock out, you know, a good physique, you watch what you eat. You eat chicken, you eat veggies, you eat plant-based protein, you eat the rainbow, you eat lots of colors in your veggies, you don't eat things in a crinkly bag, you don't eat things late at night, you might use intermittent fasting so that you have long periods where you're body is not digesting food, it's the same for your mind diet. The way that it works is moderate your screen time. For the amount of time that you're on, you should be off more than double. You should silence your notifications so that it's not jacking up your brain second by second all day long. Make it so that you have dedicated times to check your email, dedicated times to respond to texts, dedicated time to go on for a little while and connect with other people over social media. Social media is a beautiful tool that we have in today's day and age to be able to connect with people all over the world. I'm not saying it's bad. What I'm saying is the way we consume it and we take it in passively without, you know, filtering it and making sure we're only consuming things that are good for us. And I know from talking to lots of people, they lose sight of that. What you look at, you will be served more of. And it's so funny because I think I must have looked up like um, women who are 50 hairstyles because, or I must have, you know, you know, these algorithms are tricky, man. You look at something longer, they have eye gaze in their algorithm. They know I looked at this screen of some, you know, I'm going to be 49 in a month. So I must have looked at some beautiful 49-ish woman with some good hair. And now they're serving me that up good hair, 50 year olds. And I'm like, oh, that's some good hair. But I'm like, wow, that's a lot of uh, good hair, 50 year olds in my feed, that's weird. And I must have just stopped and gazed longer on one because I don't even remember looking at one or I definitely didn't look one up. So my point is it's gonna serve you what you linger on. So linger on motivational feeds so that it's serving you up motivation. It's not serving you up any media that is going to harm your brain or to take you off your purpose. So we know the more arousing the stimuli that are in your feeds, it is damaging your brain as a super normal stimulus. We know that it's a super normal stimulus in the first place, but the more arousing or exhilarating, the more damaging. So in a motivational feed, I take in content that it's like, hmm, it makes me wanna go work and help people for a hundred hours. That is a good way to come off of social media, feeling inspired to contribute to the world, get on purpose and to rock out my life with some good hair, right? So that is how you can use it. So let's just put it into a boom, 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 and then we'll wrap this video up. Number one, moderate how much time you're in the screen. Don't just jump in all the time. Don't let it call you in all the time with notifications. Schedule it, make sure it's on a schedule. Ease into your day. Do not go on your screen for at least 30 minutes. Save your brain. Let it ease into your day. Ease out of your day. Then, if you go on your screen for a half hour, you need to be in the world for at least double that. You need to be in the world for an hour. And honestly, it should be a lot more than that. Then you go back on your screen and you're taking a break and you're connecting with your grandma on Facebook. 
What a beautiful way to use Facebook, right? Then you, we use screens for work all the time. I want you to know screens resonate at 60 Hertz. That's fast for your brain in the first place. So you really need to moderate how much you're using screens for pleasure. And remember, dopamine's the pleasure seeking neurochemical. It's gonna keep you coming back for more. And if you don't manage it, it's going to manage you and it's gonna suck you in so you're passively consuming. So manage the schedule. Number two, watch what you're consuming. Clean up the feeds, get motivated, stay on purpose. Feed your brain, don't damage your brain. And lastly, make sure that you are not going to those super normal stimuli that is really increasing those speeds in your brain. It'll be the best way for you to manage the screen. Okay, I hope that helps you out. And if you're looking for help on journey of ADHD, anxiety, internet addictions, overuse of your phone, or if you can't come out of the screen, please reach out to me, drtrishlee.com. I have digital programs of different shapes and sizes and ways that we can work together personally. I'm here to help you. Okay, and as always, remember, control your brain or it'll control you.